on to winter barley. Uh, we've got we've got two good winter barleys here. They both went overwintered quite well. Um, winter barley is probably the one of the shortest season of any of the winter cereals. Uh, rye may the Elbon may head out slightly before these, but these are going to mature faster. As you can see, uh, we've got a bearded type. This is a new one that we're trying called Saturn. Uh, one of the knocks against winter barley, Dale, up in our part of the world up here is that the winter hardiness is just a little unproven, a little unknown. Uh, so for that reason, guys, I think have been a little hesitant to do much winter barley. Uh, so we've been looking at it for the last several years. Uh, this is Saturn. This is uh, P919 out of the University of Nebraska breeding program. And they both overwintered pretty well. We've been using 919 now for probably four or five years. It really has come through the winters pretty well. What you're going to see on these, when you plant them in the fall, you're going to get some growth. Most likely, everything above the ground is going to kind of burn off during the winter. And you're going to think, man, I wasted my money. That, that was bad because <laughs> it's all gone. But just give it a little time, it'll green up and it'll start growing again. Uh, whereas like the rye and the triticale, that above ground foliage never really burns off. In fact, sometimes the rye never really goes completely dormant. So the barley is not going to be nearly as aggressive as those other ones, but for that reason and because of that, this is less challenging to plant corn into. Yes. Doesn't have as much alleliopathic effect. It's still good at controlling weeds. Uh, if you look down through here, there's a few weeds, but but very when, few. When, when you can, if you can uh, come over here and look at the the alleyway here, you can see quite a bit of mare's tail. But you look in between the rows here, they, there's not much. And we we hear occasional bad reports about planting corn into rye, because rye tends to be pretty aggressive, um, but. Uh, we don't seem to hear those negative reports on barley. Um, we uh, one of the drawbacks of this P919 is this little uh, loose smut, and uh, it uh, we tend to lose a few heads on that. But uh, one nice thing about the uh, the barley is even after this heads out. And we said it, it heads out early, which is a real advantage if you want a roller crimp ahead of yeah. organic corn or something like that. But uh, it maintains its quality, uh, even in a pasture situation, very well after heading out. And it, it doesn't get as tall as the rye or triticale, but the forage yields have been fairly impressive, no taller than it yeah. is. And a lot of that's coming from the head. So, got a nice fat head. so the 919 is what we would recommend if you're wanting to graze, uh, especially graze later in the season, have good good forage quality. The Saturn is more of a feed barley or a grain barley, and so the market there would be, uh, I mean, you can if you want to grow it all the way out for grain, you certainly can. Uh, and in fact, there's an increasing number of feedlots and dairies that are trying to go completely GMO free. They're looking for, for barley, for grain, for their feeding operation. So could be a potential market there. Uh, but probably the main reason that we would use this would just simply be as a fall planted cover crop for spring planted corn where the, the grower does not want the challenge of rye. Because if you get a wet spell and you can't get in and spray that rye, it can go from eight inches tall to three feet tall in, in a matter of, of a very short period of time. So, Barley's not going to get away from you, and from that respect, we're looking at it as a cover crop ahead of corn a lot more. Yeah. And one advantage of barley grain is it, it does have a reputation for imparting a very good flavor to meat. Yeah, so barley fed grain or barley fed meat 